Hey everybody, what is going on? It's Alexander Williamson here with my lovely wife, Lara. And uh, we are bringing you the latest in technology. Two people on a screen at once. It's the first time we're trying this. We were gonna mic up separately and I was gonna have us on different screens, but we're just gonna cuddle together on the couch because she doesn't wanna be here the whole time because she doesn't really like fish. This is all just a gimmick for my birthday. Thank you, honey. Happy birthday. <laughs> so how is it going, everybody? It's good to see everyone in here. Um, this is my wife. If you have any questions for her, please feel free to throw them in chat. She's gonna do some trivia with us tonight. And then you and I, all of us, we're gonna look uh, at some of the bettas that are in the wild, including some new ones that were just discovered this year. Uh, and some that are maybe new, maybe not, maybe they're part wild, part domestic, but they've been in the wild for five or 600 years now, so it's hard to tell. So uh, yeah, exactly, it'll be interesting. But how's everybody doing? And let me also thank you very much uh, for the, well, one, for all the belated birthday wishes, the birthday yesterday, uh, and very much appreciated. And uh, also uh, Sally Ball's brother or Sally, uh, don't know which one you are, Joe Camel. Thank you so much for the $10 super chat saying, hey now, hey now, don't dream it's over. At least that's, I'm assuming that's where you were going with that. Um, Misfits, Reptiles, and Aquatics, cheers to you for uh, becoming a secret supporter. I appreciate it greatly. There's several levels of membership, and that means that they have stepped it up a notch, and so appreciated. Thank you so much. Um, how's everybody doing, though? Uh, we doing good? We, we, uh, so here's how it works, is my wife doesn't know a lot about fish. Be careful what you say. <laughs> she knows a ton about other stuff, like <laughs> shoes hey. and, and um, music. belittling me. No, um, music, yes. So she knows a lot about music. And so we thought we would start off the show and I want to get her feet wet, so to speak, get her sleeves wet in that 40 gallon breeder that is life of YouTube uh, with uh, is Lara really into this or would she rather be watching the new Ozark? Hmm. That's a hard Jimmy question. Jimmy Pease knows me pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Well, so in any case, we are going to start off trivia. She's going to ask me some questions. Y'all can play along. And then I'm going to ask her some questions. But the way we're starting tonight off is going to be aquatic bands or bands or songs like music that has something to do with either the aquarium or water or um fish so uh yeah and the band fish is off limits because my wife knows way too much about them and has seen them plenty of enough times it would be like me talking about i don't know nano fish or something so they're off limits for the night that one's too easy okay so, are you ready? I'm ready. I have my trivia on my computer, so I'm going to be looking at my screen. Amateur. By the way, look at this. I got this for my birthday from my lovely wife. It's it, it's it's a uh, it's a reminder to everyone. Let's see. <laughs> I, I can't even get it on the screen. Come on. Like and subscribe. Don't forget. Even though all of y'all probably didn't. And my other birthday present was she she bought I'm such a cheap bastard that I won't buy my own merch like I won't buy anything I won't buy anything new until it has fallen apart completely unless it's like fish or music related so she bought me one of my own hoodies from from the the merch store so so yeah if uh, you want to pick anything up like a hoodie like this one which also by the way can they see it um, straighten up a little bit. There you go. Yes, you can see it. And there's some that are steampunk. There's some that are normal. There's some that have uh, two images, salmon, shrimp, betta, you name it. So, in any case, uh, Hippie, J Hippie John the Fisherman says, I'm a fish kid too. Sweet. Yay. She was a Grateful Dead kid, and then she killed Jerry, and uh, she had to find something new to do with herself for the rest of the 90s. 
but no, I was definitely in that crowd too. So we, we go back, even though she's like big corporate, big wig now, uh, she still got the love for, for the counter culture that lives living in her aquarium, living okay. in her living room. <laughs> so, okay. Right. So how are we going to do this? Am I going to ask you one and then this was your idea. One, or am I going to ask you all of them? Well, let's ask each, let's go back and forth. Okay. We'll ping pong so, it. Mine are songs that are about oh, the band. Great. I mean, songs. what? Uh, they're really, they're going to be really obvious. So, please, this is my first round. Can you guys hear us okay? Can you crafting, hear her okay? Crafting uh, questions. Okay. Okay. This, so remember, song is about water related things. Yeah, I got it. I know that. <laughs> okay. This is a classic tune that has a very tragic story behind it. It was recorded before the singer's death um, from a plane crash Buddy Holly. in Wisconsin. Not Buddy Holly. It, the song was written while in California, while the singer was in California. Time in a Bottle by Jim Croce. And chronicles the feelings of a lonely, depressed man who's suffering emotionally and passes his time by watching boats come and go. Brandy! The whistling at the end of the song is what sticks with you the most. What? The whistle sitting on the dock of the bay? <laughs> okay, all right. We can Are I can, you gonna argue with me that that's not no what it's not exactly like got a fishing word in the title or anything. No, but, I, it's these are more water related than I had to kind of go broad. Okay, perhaps. all right. Okay. Okay. You got that was good. That was really that, good. That that was good. All right, let me find my mine mine me. Yep, Otis Redding. That's what Patty's been Yeah, doing. Patty, you got it. Patty and I are on the same wavelength, always. Patty's here. Um, all right, let's see here. So uh what do I have here? Okay, this is a this one, if you fail this one, it's oh, because I'm you scared. were high at some fish concert at like 15 years old. Okay. Uh, this 90s punk and ska band had hits like uh, Sell Out, Beer, and the most famous hit of theirs, a cover of Take On Me, uh, Eileen. And Come On, Eileen. Oh, I was like, what's Eileen? So, um, Sublime. It has something to do with... <laughs> okay, it's got what we're talking about in the title. It's a band. It's a ska band with... Fishbone. Is that a thing? The band? That's not a ska band. I don't know what genre they are. Fishbone. It's not fishbone. Okay. It's not fishbone. Um, I give up. <laughs> it's real big fish. Oh. Thank Yay. you. I, I'm real bad at this. Hanoko H got it. Thank you. All right. We got we got it. All right. Mm. And P and W, thank you for buying one of my shirts. I appreciate it. I'm hot. I need this to. This is gonna be embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> you know so much music stuff. Come on. Why? I don't get it. It's the right. pressure. Okay. Oh, yes. And Danikin, thank you so much. What? We have co-host Laura? Yes, indeed we do. Thank you so much, Kenny. I appreciate it. All tips will be going to uh, Laura tonight. My coffee fund. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I was born ready. This one's uh, maybe... I got to go get this one. Okay. From the 1961 film Breakfast at Tiffany's, this wistful and dreamy song. Was... Moon River. Andy Williams. <laughs> Next. Next song. That one was too easy. Okay. Uh, do you know what waterway or what region the song is about that's singing about? Moon River? Mm -hmm. uh, probably the bayou. Uh, so, so the water Savannah? race is Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, well, it's 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 like a, what's the other dumb song? Tammy in that movie. Uh, all right, let's see here. Give me an easy one. Oh, it's my turn already again. All right. Okay. Um, well, what happened to all my? Okay. This artist. Artist had the number one hit song for 22 weeks in America and in more countries than any time any other artist at that point in history had ever had and they had the song Barbie Girl 
So what's the theme? All the bands are water fish related? They have something to do with the aquarium okay. or water or the fish or whatever Failing. in their name. You just, you don't know who did that. I'm a Barbie girl. You know, that dumb techno song, song from the 90s. And it's a terrible song. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and there's answers in front of you on the screen. She doesn't know how this works. Oh, though. I don't know. I honestly don't. I have no idea. Aqua. I would never know that. Aqua. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good job, uh, Good job Joseph. Guys. Thank you. Oh, wait. No, we've got actually Brooklyn Bell seems to have gotten it first, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, Remember what kind of music I listen to? Nalani, hello. How are you? Uh, awful song, yes. <laughs> she finally caught a stream. Yeah, awful song. Totally awful song. Okay. Okay, my turn. Your turn. Okay, this is a folk, a folk song performed by a duo in the early 70s. It won five Grammy Awards. Song of the Year, Record of the Year, Best Contemporary Song, Best Engineer Record, Best Arrangement, Accompanying Vocalist, and also won Album of the Year. It shows what real friendship is about. The ones who love you will always be there to rescue you. Is that a lyric? I don't think so, no. <laughs> Where are you getting these? What, what kind of from bootleg website did you get these from? <laughs> um, so it's a folk. Simon and Garfunkel. Did they break up by then? Bridge over troubled waters. Oh, All right. Mine are too easy. Okay. Sally got it. Who who got it? Sally. Oh no, and Patty got it too. Nice. Well, she got Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. You know that was their last album. You know, Paul Simon he did music on his own as early as like 1964. His own album, um, Flowers Never Bend with the Rainfall, and uh, that's one of my favorite albums of his is super psychedelic and i think he might have even been using the pot back then okay um my turn to try to stump you then we'll get to betas guys i promise that's a thing it'll happen um okay arguably one of the first ever hard rock bands this seminal album has a song of the same name as the main uh, number one hit from the album. It was a dirty, or, or the image, the imagery spoken of on the track is dirty pre-punk uh, by many accounts, and it is very anti-establishment, anti-religion, and even speaks of un, um, I don't know how to say this uh, on, on, uh, on YouTube, bad things with kids. Okay. And it came out in 1971. Read it from the top. <laughs> That's a long one. <laughs> okay. Arguably one of the first hard rock albums and bands of all time. This seminal album. White Zombie. No. White Zombie? <laughs> they came out in the mid 80s. Okay. Uh, late 80s. Had, um, had a song and album of the same name. In the, al or in the song, it has words that are dirty, imagery that's pre-punk, anti-establishment, anti-religion, and speaks of nasty thoughts with kids. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Jethro Tull? What's the album called? Oh, Aqua, um, what's the Aquafina, is that it? Aquafina, yeah. yeah okay. That's the album by Jethro Tull, Aquafina. Woo, I kinda got one. <laughs> I actually used to listen to Jethro Troll a ton when I was in high school. I can tell because you still think it was Aquafina. It's Aqua Long. I like Aquafina. <laughs> <laughs> um, I quit. I won't play anymore. <laughs> All right. Your turn to stump me. Uh, I only have one more and you're going to get it. What? You only, you've had a week to work on this I assignment, ma'am. I was busy. Um, you're going to get this in like, well, maybe not. I kind of left it vague, but Okay. CeeLo Green, remember him? Yep. Um, he, he sang, was in Goody Mob. He sang backup on this song that won the MTV Video Music Award for Video of the Year in 1995. Ooh. Billboard named the song number 10 on their list of 100 greatest girl group songs of all oh, time. Oh, Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls. Yeah, I forgot he was It's involved. actually just called Waterfalls. Whatever. <laughs> Aquafina. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Um, you got to get this one. If you don't, you have to live outside in the yard forever. <laughs> All right. Name the artist and song. I'm giving you lyrics here. We're just two lost souls. Swimming in a fishbowl. Pink Floyd. <laughs> and what's the song? I don't remember. <laughs> terrible with song names. Man, you went to too many concerts. <laughs> um, I don't remember the name. Welcome, Nalani. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Wish you were here. Thank Patty you, Patty. wins. Patty Patty's wins. the winner of the trivia. <laughs> Patty, you can come live in the house, and Laura will live outside. I think it's the pressure. My brain does not work. Yeah, it's really, these are terrifying people. <laughs> Okay, so now, oh, now that we we've we've inducted Lara to officially being on the I show, I just embarrassed myself. Happy birthday! Thanks for doing that, honey. No, I mean I was hoping you were just gonna quiz me. I said, why don't you get some hard questions about fish or talk to my friends? And, we can do that next time, stump. perhaps. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh man, ADHD Quag says, I'm sorry, haven't had my meds. COVID makes me throw them up. Sorry, that's Ooh. rough. Um, okay, so today what, uh, Patty says, what a great co-host, a real natural. <laughs> I agree. Thanks. Now get me a drink. <laughs> no, just kidding. Do you want me to bring the fish? The fish. To you that are in oh, the yeah. kitchen. Yeah, okay, sure, yeah. If you could bring me the, BRB. bring me the one that you think are beta rubras. Okay, so I just went to Aquarium Co-op, and they had uh, a couple fish there that I've been looking for for a while. And the wet spot down in um, uh, Portland has these fish, but I haven't seen them up here in a while. Um, <laughs> Santa Dudu says, uh, come on, no one said Three Strange Days by School of Fish. Oh, Laura does love that song, yeah. No, we have plans for this to be an ongoing thing, or at least I do. So we didn't want to hit all of these up. But, I I mean, I have a list of, like, five more questions. Apparently she didn't all week. Um, hey, you, you got it. You knew which ones were the rubras. So I picked up some beta rubras, and right now they're not super colorful, but the male is actually still pretty colorful. Uh, rubra, if you guys remember in our episodes on speaking Latin and Greek, means red. Uh, Eruth also means red. But let's see, or Erythra, or Erythra, Erythria. There's lots of variations of it. But if we can kind of get him on there, it's hard to see through the bag. But he's very pretty, and these are wild rubras. So I have right now. Machaensis, Rubra, um, Macrostomas, uh, mino, mino, uh, Minopas, what are they? Minopias, Minopas. Why do I always say it wrong? Uh, and then I also, um, <laughs> not the Candiru, Patty, is not that fish. Erythria, not Urethra. Okay, Urethra Franklin. Um, in any case, yes, but I got them for 10 bucks a pop at Aquarium Co-op's store, but the male is super pretty and the female's huge in this species. So that's the male and, uh, the female, they, they were like 30 in a 20 gallon together and they were brought in by Randy, uh, who works there, but he also does the aquarium, uh, the Aquarius pod podcast, um, but the female, look at her. She's like, well, of course, she, you can't see her now. She just scoots whenever I try to get a shot of her. But she's twice as long as the male, probably. Or, or at least at least as, like, he, she's probably three inches, and he's probably two inches, one and a half to two inches. Um, but, yeah, and yes, Average Fish Keeper, they definitely do have a bunch more of the Rubras right now. They're on the top shelf in one of the middle tanks. Uh, yeah, Embolus uh, is another one that I'd like to really get. That, and, you know, I think once if I had the Embolus, the Machansis, and the 
Um, now I've got the Rubra. I think with those, um, you can kind of make the alien bettas. Like they, that's partially what's in the cross. So I'm very curious about how that's all going to go. And then speaking of, um, <laughs> uh, is it Kalina or I don't want to say that name wrong. It's such a nice sounding name. Uh, but yeah, um, definitely, uh, I always feed Murphy when I can too. He's awesome. The, the, they're, uh, they're big old fish. When, 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 um, a ladybird died and they got Murphy, I remember it and he's gotten so big. I mean, since he started there, he's gotten huge. Um, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see here. ADHD says, uh, I just pulled out mail or my pulled my mails out yesterday. They are finally old enough to spawn. Would you like me to send you some babies of the, Oh my gosh, I would love that. Yeah. Let, um, contact me and, and I can send you some money for shipping or whatever, whatever we need to do. Um, yeah, I would love that. Uh, I'm just trying to get more of the wild, um, Anabantoids and bettas and stuff, you know, garamis and things. I want to get some of the unusual ones. Plus, they do so well in an in uh you know a tank that has no running water, like just a jungle tank. If you can keep the room humid and the air over seventy three or four, they do really well in like a completely dead um, swamp type tank or you know like um, you know a flooded uh, type tank. Um, Hey, oh yeah, Hank died. Ladybird is the one that's still alive, isn't it? Carrie, you're you probably know better than me. I can't remember. I can't keep other people's fish names straight. I can't keep my own fish names straight. What's up, Je uh, Jess? Uh, uh, Maine's Tales Fur and Fins, the Aquatic Morning Show. That's where I do all my. Uh, oh, Hank died. Ladybird is at the warehouse. Okay, thank you. Thanks for straightening me out, Hank. That's right. Um, and then so. Jess, uh, who's in the chat, I just wanted to throw this out there. And also, if you guys are members, uh, you may not know, but every week now I am posting uh, shorts of the news that's going on, like this day in history of the hobby or of science or biology relating to fish, or this uh, new discovery was made in the last week or whatnot. Um, I'm doing these short videos. They're somewhere between one and five minutes, ideally. Sometimes I go to like eight minutes if I'm really carried away. But I'm releasing these to my members, channel members also, I've decided. I was going to just do it on um, like TikTok or something like that. But I just don't even want to get started with that. <laughs> um, and... Uh, any case, so but but yeah, I'm posting those now for members. You guys will get the secret link that Jess gets, and then Jess, if you guys if you guys aren't members, you can still see it by tuning into the Aquatic Morning Show, and it'll still be a segment every day on her show. So uh, you can catch it one way or the other. Like always, I try not to hide anything from anyone who doesn't have the money to spend. I totally get not everyone can throw down uh, money, but it's a buck ninety nine if you do want access to it. Um, that's another little feature, but. Uh, on the, the channel of Jess's, which is Maine's Tales, Fur, and Fins, um, I may have, uh, no, I got it right for once. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, and also, um, uh, your average fish keeper uh, brought me some cool fish for my birthday, which I really, really appreciate. Uh, and he brought me three snowball plecos. And actually, while I put these Veta just in this tank to warm up, because they've been on the countertop, even though it's warm enough in the house. But um, I want to show everybody else, um, since they're, they've are they been real photogenic, um, The they ended up in my Aquascape tank. Wow, that is not focusing whatsoever. Oh, it's because it thinks it's, it doesn't think it's a person, obviously. Uh, but right there is a snowball pleco. And he brought me three snowball plecos that are growing out. And they're going to be the cleanup crew slash algae eating. And, like, they'll help eat the vegetative stuff in that aquascape uh, uh, 
tank. And yeah, they're not shy at all, man. Those, those are really outgoing little guys. So I really appreciate it, buddy. Um, yeah. Okay. So in other news, uh, in beta news, and by the way, how are we all, how, how, how are we all doing? We all, we all feeling good. We all doing good. I think so. I hope so. Uh, I wanted to show you guys a story that you may have missed. It, yeah, those are really cool plecos. Let me pull up a link of what those plecos look like that I just got. Um, and they're actually a smaller variety um, and a, of the snowball pleco than normal, which is even cooler. Um, and it's a uh, Rio. I'm I'm gonna forget what is it again. Um, what is it again? Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, your average fish keeper. What did you uh, say? They was it Rio Rancho or or Rio? I can't remember what he said was the collection point subspecies of snowball pleco. Um, uh, oh, L two hundred one. Okay, L two hundred one. Oh, the the Orinoco uh, Angel, right? The Orinoco Angel Pleco, or Snowball Pleco. Uh, they're the hy uh, hypencistrus then. Um, but let me let me pull up a photo for you guys because they're really cool ones. I like them a lot. Um, let's go to get wake up computer. Yeah, but thank you so much and. Carrie, thank you so much. Also, happy birthday, she says, I think. Uh, yeah, definitely. It was it was just my birthday the other day. I had to do um, pre-surgery stuff, so I didn't actually get to stream on my actual birthday. But, yeah, it was yesterday. Um, let's see here. Come on. For some reason, uh, the Internet slows way down when I share this screen i need to get a hard line put in um which i'm working on i got a booster and an extender and a new router and like i feel like i've tried so many things to make the internet faster at this place i've got the most expensive internet that they'll let me get and <laughs> and it still is a pain in the butt so um rather annoying rather annoying but um here we go here is um here is those here's what those little plecos look like as they get older um sometimes they stay yellow sometimes they they get more uh white these guys have a little bit of a like a yellow hue to them definitely um which i don't mind they're kind of like the gold nuggets or something almost uh but yeah they're really a, a very pretty one and uh they're maybe an inch and a half two inches I mean, probably an inch and a half long right now but yeah Internet is so frustrating in Washington. Yes, I 100% agree. Uh, yeah, Mary, they are really pretty. Um, Jimmy, Pleco Gang, Pleco Gang. Um, so let's see here. What did I miss? What did Jimmy say? Oh, uh, yeah, Average Fish Keeper, just subscribed to you. I hope to see more from you. Yeah, 100%, dude. Uh, we've got really quality uh talented and kind people here in the pacific northwest there are a lot of y'all out there i know with channels that are in in this general neck of the woods uh he's definitely like right in this neck of the woods he, he came by at like eight in the morning which was so kind to drop those off on saturday um which was yeah very kind um all right so now let me pull up this link that I was going to um, have going for you guys about a new betta species that's a new wild betta. Um, so that should be fun. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. And if anybody has any other normal questions in between, you know, anything going on, uh, uh, what happened, uh, Craig? Somebody passed away in your area? Um, oh, don't give me this junk where it makes you, I'm not, I'm not logging in to you. Um, can I not even get past, and this isn't the article I wanted anyways. Um, hold on.
Uh, oh, here we go. Amazonas will be my friend without paying, but actually there is a really good uh, article that I used for a lot of research on betas that talks about how they've found DNA over a thousand years old, uh, showing that humans definitely uh, were involved in monkeying with the genetics. Surf City Cichlids, hello. Welcome. Uh, ADHD says, uh, how would you treat a fish that had its eyeball bitten off? I just put it in a smaller tank alone with clean water and plan on changing it until it heals. Yeah, that's kind of all you can do. I mean, honestly, you can do that. You can do salt dips. I'd, I'd recommend a salt dip every couple days. Um, and if you want, you could do uh, a gram positive uh, antibacterial antibiotic uh, well, like erythromycin. Um, or, you know, or myosin, canned myosin, any of those will work. Um, but uh, I, I don't know if I'd even treat it with that right away. Fish are pretty good at surviving getting their eye bit out, honestly. Um, yeah. But I, I would say keep an eye on it. Also, keeping the water slightly uh, acidic is really going to help as well. Um uh bomber craig somebody drowned in the river huh uh hello from vancouver island west karen duff well welcome welcome and uh hello i love vancouver island i love to go over there uh i we haven't been able to go my wife and i usually try to go over there uh we went there for our honeymoon actually uh well to victoria specifically in bushard gardens and stuff so um Bushard Gardens, is that the right one? Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, all right, so they discovered a new pleco, or my mind's stuck on pleco. Uh, they discovered uh, a new beta, and uh, these three, Kamal, Tan, and Ng, Ng or Ng, uh, they are a crew that found this originally in 2020, and finally everything's published on it. Uh, this article is from before it was officially all uh, official. But basically, they found this new Hillstream beta, which to me, like, is very different. I mean, look at it. It's got a little bit of the uh, iridescent blue on every scale, and then it's kind of like a dark, dark, rusty red. Um, but it's actually a uh a uh hill stream species like it lives in fast rivers like little creeks and so um i don't know i find that really interesting uh but the body consists of yellow dorsal fin region uh black lateral region reddish ventral region the male um and they're calling it nulahan beta nulahan right here uh Beta Nulahan. Julia Gulia. No, Beta Nulahan. And um, basically, um, yeah, I mean, what you see is what you get, but it's got a little more color to it. Here's some collected ones. Uh, and then this species group also has um, Beta Acarensis, which, um, if you're looking at them, uh, this is a comparison. Um, so this is, uh, the top one is a male chini beta, uh, or Chinese, I'm guessing. Yeah, uh, no, it named after chin, because it's got an I at the end. So chin I, or, or yeah, chin I. And then, um, the bottom one is the, uh, male nulahan. And these are now in the same um, grouping. Uh, so it doesn't belong to the Splendens group. It belongs to the uh, the mouth brooder. Um, what are they called? Um, let's see. Uh, 
the other fish presented in the region, just so you guys know. Okay, here we I, I wanted to read off some of this too, just because it's interesting to me. Specimens were collected inside the Crocker Range Forest Reserve in shallow, clear water streams that had overhanging riparian vegetation with pebbles and sand and silt as substrate. At the time of collection, the water had a temperature of 75 degrees, 74 Celsius, and a pH of 6.5. The dissolved oxygen concentration, uh, pretty high, 6.25 milligrams. Um, they also collected giant model, like mod, modeled, but model eels uh, and um, Bornean spotted barbs uh, or Barbotes uh, solii. And then um, there's also... Uh, Nema tabramis borensis and the tor tembra and gastromazon in tororsis. I don't know those fish at all. Um, but yeah, so kind of cool that they found them. Uh, so the newly discovered, uh, discovered uh, spe species found in hill stream habitats in the western Saba region. Uh, these species are uh, closest related to Beta um, chinai and then to uh, Beta balunga, uh, and they differ from the rest of the other um, Betas, but their next closest group is the Acarensis group, uh, having a following communistic characteristics of the yellow iris uh, when alive. Uh, mature males with greenish blue iridescence on their operculums or basically like where their gills are um, when alive and mature fish uh, with distinct distinct transversive bars on their caudal fin with a slender body, a belly area with a faint reticulated pattern uh, and absence of tiny black spots on the anal fin. Uh, pre-dorsal scales, they have 20 to 21 of them, and um, yeah, so in any case, I just think that's cool because uh, it just shows that we're always learning new uh, bettas. Uh, you can get a snakehead betta for a $40 pair, nice. Um, I do have some betta uh, or macrostomas right now, so like, let me just pull those up right now. Um, I got some more. I had an accident like four, three years ago, four years ago when I, I had these originally. Uh, but I did get some babies. They're they're teeny. They're under an inch long when I got them. I've had them a couple weeks now. But I, I have some babies of the macrostoma, which is the largest betta. And um, this is also like the fighting bulldog betta that they love um, over in Southeast Asia. These are collected to fight and they can get up to maybe like five six inches long they get big uh they're the biggest of the bettas i i believe unless that's changed uh but they sell for around 200 bucks around here unless you know someone breeding them and then they sell for please take them off my hands i have hundreds of babies uh which seems to be uh <laughs> the kind of thing that happens with all fancy high-end fish is you know, you start out with them and maybe you sell a few to people who are really interested in them. And then there's who's going to pay 200 bucks for a fish uh, after a certain hardcore group. And uh, yeah, but this is what they look like as babies or juveniles. And this is what mine look like right now, but even smaller. And they're starting to get like a red belly. Um, the fry are really interesting. They kind of need to be raised in acidic green water uh, as far, and when you look at them, they need like this picture that's gonna pop up in a sec. They need like all this leaf material. At least anybody, the only people I know who have bred them successfully, they've had to put down tons of leaf material. And um, yeah, a lot of uh, plants and leaves in, in the tank with them uh, or, or it's an issue. Uh, I'll show you those beta rubra also, a better picture of them. Uh, seven mile, hello. Uh, so imagine a beta macrostoma with a thousand years of intense selection like 
uh, Betis Blendens. Yeah, you know, well, the other thing that they're uncovering is that Betis Blendens may not actually be a wild species. So that's the new big controversy that pe some people are really like up in arms about. And they're saying like, no, of course they're their own species. Uh, but there are some geneticists now that are saying, hey, they've been, been breeding these at least a thousand years, if not maybe even 2000 years in captivity in order to fight these fish. Um, and keep them also for good luck. But many villages used to use it as a way to settle disputes by fighting betta fish. And that way they wouldn't have to have an actual uh, like physical fight or battle between villagers. And um, so it actually had a pretty big significant role in their culture. Uh, this is the betta ruber. This is what I just bought at Aquarium Co-op today. And when they're really all colored up and excited and ready to spawn, they can they can be incredibly beautiful. Um, again, the ruber or rubra meaning red, and uh, you can see why they got named the red betta basically. Uh, so yeah, they're thinking that that uh, the the splendens, which means beautiful, or, or I mean, you can kind of remember that because splendid or splendid, I mean, seems like a good thing or whatnot. Uh, but yeah, the, they, they think that it could be actually that there was a Splendens and that, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, but now it's just been crossed so much because what they're finding is that a lot of these bettas have, uh, other DNA. So like this is a beta rubra that's not colored up at all for, um, spawning. But what you'll find is in the rubra, they're already um being selected for now i mean they've only been in in the hobby probably 40 years they're one of the older wild bettas but i mean they're they come in a quite a variety see they come in like this this pattern and and other patterns as well so to me i don't know i found that real um kind of peculiar and interesting. Some of them out of the Czech Republic I've noticed specifically have yellow all around their tail, um, which is neat. Uh, Danang, thank you so much for the cool, for the cool fish comment and the super chat. Appreciate it. Put that in the birthday fund. I'm going to buy some, some more fish to stock a couple tanks I'm redoing. Um, and then, oh, I, I just love these. I just, this just caught my eye cause it was, um, going on in, in the lower part of the screen. But, um, the um the there are so many awesome bettas and we're gonna look at some uh we're gonna look at some of them uh today but this this photo spread is from amazonas originally i think and this is uh the betta hendra and these are really a beautiful wild betta i mean they could be um uh let's see here Oh, did I miss something with the super chat? Um, yeah, even it, yeah, totally, Nalani. Even in the big box stores, finding um, more short tail bettas. Yeah, definitely. Crown tail half moon. Hey, fish fam, did someone say bettas? Yes. And if I get anything wrong, please feel free to collect me. I'm not claiming to be an expert on bettas. I just wanted to look at some of the wild bettas that are out there. Um, <laughs> Craig, I am actually, if it had a name, I would be uh, uh, on the cusp of it because I'm the, the 19th born right after midnight. Um, so uh, I'm I'm technically a Capricorn, but if you're into all that biz, uh, most people that have done reading or whatever for me on that kind of stuff, the, they say that I am like cusp, if you believe in that. I don't, whatever For whatever that's worth. I don't really subscribe too much to it but find it quirky i find i find it an interesting uh heuristic device to like think about yourself just like tarot cards like i don't necessarily think of tarot cards as like um oh tarot cards i'm gonna use those because they're gonna tell me my future what i do find interesting and this is what one of my friends who is chinese and he uses the I Ching, which is another kind of thing like that he um he told me that he's he's well versed in that and he's kind of trained in that um, by his grandfather, who's a Taoist priest uh, or Confucius priest, rather. Um, and he was saying that 
uh, he uses it, and it's basically like these kind of mm, obscure comments on how your day or life is going to go, or like food for thought, like kind of deep sounding commentary but basically um with the tarot cards he he's into those too because basic you you look at them and they they cause cues in your brain that that um yeah it's a brainstorming tool exactly um asia uh, luan exactly um some people do think that the tarot is uh um <laughs> I guess magical or 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 a thing, especially like some Wiccan people I know, uh, or mystic kind of folks. But yeah, the I Ching's uh, or or the tarot. I mean, I definitely think or or zodiac stuff, astrology. To me, I don't think it's useless or anything, but I think it's more like an exercise in exploring thoughts that like. Is that true? Is that how it is? I don't necessarily think that like, oh, um, uh, I'm, I'm Saturn is influencing something or other. I kind of just ignore that part of it. But that's just me personally. Who knows? Maybe I'm totally wrong and I'm going to hell and uh, all, all the Zodiac creatures will come and banish me to Ishtar. Um, I don't know if those ones are mouth brooders. Um, yeah, exactly. Tarot triggers subconscious to affect the conscious. That's a good way to put it, um, Patrick. Definitely. Thank you. Um, yeah, runes. Exactly. Very, very similar. Uh, and I think a lot of those, they're old tools. Um, I mean, they're, they're very, they're, they're around for a reason. So, uh, and I mean, I think even like Proverbs or, or Psalms or whatever, like they have reasons like that or fables, like they all have a, a purpose sort of like that. Um, let's see here. Sounds like allergic reaction. Oh, um, <laughs> thanks, Mary. All right. Let's see here. Let's focus back on fish. Um, Uh, let's see here. Um, do, 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 Um, wait, what, did I, what just happened on my live or on my stream? Sorry, guys, I'm fiddling again. Um, all right, uh, I wanted to pull up the list of bettas so that we could look at how many there are. Because right now there are 75 species uh, and probably a thousand strains, honestly. Uh, oops, I didn't put that in the right place. Uh, so... Hey, Patrick, I'd like to talk to you about that. That's interesting. Um, definitely. Uh, okay, StreamYard. Do, 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 do. That's not what I wanted to happen. Come on, thing. Do my bidding picture. That's No, no. Try this way. There we go. Ah, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now we have the things that I want, the way the things we have them. Okay, so the bettas, they're pretty cool. Um, there's 73 species as of 2017. Now we know that there's actually, what, four more since then? So we're up to 76 or seven species officially. Uh, obviously, um, we'll go over a couple basics while we're here. Um, they used to be known as fighting fish. Um, uh, Betta, do, 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 do. the name Betta is pronounced, uh, okay, yeah, we get it. Uh, it may be spelled with one T. Uh, the name of the genus is derived from the Malay word, uh, Econ Betta, which means persistent fish, that they are. 
Um, yeah. And the vernacular name for placat is often applied to short fin or ornamental strains derived from placad, meaning fighting fish. So placid means fighting fish originally in, in Thai. Um, we, and placat is how we Westerners say that word, uh, or two words rather. Uh, but the Thai name members of all the ones that we think of like in the stores are Betta Splendens uh, uh, and their placade or fancy placade. Uh, uh, they, and they have aggressive tendencies um, in the wild, but not so much really. I mean, they're finding now that the line breeding is over a thousand years. So uh, they were bred for aggression. And for some reason, red has to do with aggression in the Splendens species. And so um, in Thailand, they don't, they don't restrict one species of beta to a, uh, a strain, which is kind of interesting. They, they generalize that you can mix and match them and kind of hybridize the fish which is interesting because I don't know, I wish I'd love to have a chart of which ones are, can reproduce with one another successfully. Uh, because if, if the Thai who kind of have the longest history with them do not discern going back in history, it would also indicate it that that thought of betas being, um, perhaps splendens, betta splendens being a, a unique species that is uh, a mix of the other species. But on the red list, well, those beta rubras are going ballistic over in that tank. On the red, uh, I, IUCN red list, uh, they've uh, got the beta levita, uh, the beta um, minopina, and then the beta persephone, and the beta. Uh, Spilotogena, um, but there's also uh, reports that um, Beta Tommy or Tom I, <laughs> I guess it's Tom I, is named after someone with the last name Tom, uh, having become extinct in Singapore between the 70s and 1994, um, but it continues to exist in the Indonesia because people let it go from captivity. Um, <laughs> uh, Alex, uh, on a scale of one to 10, how mad would you be at me if I attempted to mix an embolus and a fancy splendens one time as an experiment, or is that too taboo? Hey, I say go for it. Keep an eye on them so they don't tear each other apart. But if they aren't hurting each other, like give it a shot. I don't care. Um, just don't sell it as anything else, but it's not like you're going to release it back home. I know you're in the U S so like go for it. Um, that's how they made alien, the, the alien breeds of, of bettas. That is a hybrid. Um, I don't know. I, it is very taboo to some people though. Like rainbow people definitely don't want rainbow fish mixed. Um, yeah. And I don't think you would be the first time. Uh, yeah, exactly what Craig said. Just tell people what they are and don't release them, you know, to somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Well, if they don't know what they're doing, they're probably not going to breed them. But, um, you know, don't hand over an, the material, a male and a female, to breed um, to anybody who won't pass on the info responsibly. You know, that's that's my main thing with, with hybrids and stuff. Uh, a lot of people say, like, don't ever do it or, or you know, it's it's – yeah, but I, I just think that's a little – I don't like I don't like mixing, for instance, um, cichlids. Like I, I do kind of feel weird mixing like um, parrot cichlids with convict cichlids. I do have those two polar um, convict parrot cichlids or polar blood cichlids, whatever you want to call them, um, that I got when I was down in Portland giving my speech to the G pass club, but um, they've grown up quite a bit now and they're in my tank and they're, they kind of are freaks. Um, like anatomically, I feel like they might be happier not existing. <laughs> like they just don't seem like their organs and everything fit quite right. And 
flower horns sometimes turn out that way. I think I think as long as you're thinking of the fish's well-being and the end result is that they end up with a, a healthy, um, then I think you're okay. But to me, that's really the bottom line. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you guys have a question for me also, I'd just appreciate it if you say at the secret history living in your aquarium because some people lately have been messaging me saying hey i haven't been able to get any questions in or you haven't seen my question and um i've been looking back at the chat and being like well you never asked it with an at symbol uh so it's really hard to keep track of everyone sometimes especially when i'm reading or pulling up articles and stuff like that so i just appreciate it if you use the at sign um otherwise you can try i just can't promise i'll get to it if you use the at and then my channel name, I'll probably almost always get to it. Uh, and super chats, I usually always will get to eventually too, um, as well, because they kind of stay like they pop up. Uh, but I don't want to like in I don't want to make y'all encouraged to have to super chat to get a question answered. Um, Apocalyptic Adam, welcome. You made a stream right on. Okay, so. Um, in this same beta group that we just talked about, here is that new beta um, Nulahan. Uh, and you can see, look at this. All these bettas have the same ichthyologists, Tan and Ing. And now, granted, there's probably several ichthyologists with the name Ing, but this happens to be Peter Ki Lin Ing. This is probably a Vietnamese name, usually Ng is. Um, but Tan and Ng uh, and Wang are three of, and then also Chun, not Wang Chung. Uh, but in any case, those names you'll find over and over. Look at this. I mean, all the way back in this whole complex, in the Beta Acarensis complex, which is where those new Beta Nulahans are. Um, his name is on every species uh, other than this one, which was found in 98, and this one found in 1940, and this one in 1910. Otherwise, he's been there and helped publish everything, um, which is crazy. Uh, yeah. Uh Thanks, uh, Patrick, also, by the way. Um, ah, the beta uh, Chinai has your birth uh, birthday year, huh? Uh, let's see here. So, yeah, 2020, 20 beta, brand new. These guys uh, are, are beta discoverers. Yeah, they definitely are. The, the, those bettas um, are kept at around uh well they said the the creek they were in was 74 degrees so my guess is they probably can range from the lows they're probably finding them in the dry season because it, it would make no sense to go during the wet season to try to find bettas uh because it's ev everything's too flooded so they probably go during the dry season and and look around um for when they spawn and when they pair off in ponds and little like puddles and flooded forests uh, but it, it being a hill stream species in a creek, I guess maybe that might not be true. But let's look at some of the other ones associated with it. Um, this is the oldest of them and the one that their group is named after. And, of course, there's no friggin' picture. That's ridiculous. Uh, but it's from the Sarawak uh, region. Um, and uh, let's let's pull up a photo of this. This is ridiculous. Um, beta acarensis. Um, seriously, fish has good articles on most of the bettas, by the way. Like, I've looked at their, they have good info on a lot of fish, basically. So, but um, let me pop this up on the screen real quick so you guys can see. Um, this one is why a lot of people assumed that wild bettas would be boring is because for a long time, this was what we thought of wild bettas as a lot of the bettas that were found had not been found deep into, um, rivers and things or during their spawning modes. 
Uh, and some, you know, they're not, none of them have been selectively bred. So you've got this beta acarensis that is uh, not the flashiest fish I've ever seen. In fact, it's a pretty boring little three-inch fish. Um, but these are the ones that live in faster water. And here you can see, I mean, look at the, the variation. In, this is a female here, but look at the variation. The females usually in bettas have the horizontal stripes uh, for longer. When they're sub-adults, uh, a lot of times that's when people sex them because it's easier. But then again, um, like here's a betta ebonorium, or ebonorium, yeah, ebonorium. Uh, and look at that. I mean, just really cool um, markings on this female here. But check out the um, male beta ebonorium. Oh, it's a super small picture. Come on. But, you know, a lot of people don't even know that these bettas all exist. And they're, they're just beautiful fish. Um, where is the beta ebonorium uh, with a good picture? Man, that's such a great picture that was, I mean, you can see the iridescence here in the tail, that green and blue, but most of the pictures you find online are not them in their spawning colors. They're in their, this mode here. But look at that tail. It's, it's like a, it's got the basket kind of weave to it, um, which is quite unique. Um. I don't really like the big tail bettas anymore. I used to think that they were really cool, but after all the infections that I've seen and stuff, now I'm definitely very pro placot. There's just less injuries and stuff. I respect that it's hard to 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 spawn and the upkeep of like taking care of bettas that are um you know like that have the long fins and everything, the crown tails and full moons and half moons and all that. But I think I really like these, you know, more wild type and placat bettas just in general. Um, also just have having, have had, a, I've had several of the big flouncy tailed bettas and guppies and other fish like that. Uh, and one other fish rip their tails Two, they can rip their own tails on plants or like sticks and stuff in the tank. And then three, like they can burn themselves on heaters and stuff frequently. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, Asya Luan says, uh, I choose what fish uh, I keep based on what is happy at room temperature. So 72 to 75 so maybe some of this type of betta are options. Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, most bettas can be kept at room temperature, especially if your room is over 70 degrees. Actually, in fact, I don't think I've seen a single betta that can't be kept around 70 degrees. You know what I mean? Um, but, uh, okay, so this way of doing things is not working. What we're going to do um, is... We're going to, I'm going to pop a, up a new window. I'll leave this window open. And uh, we're going to go to Google Images based off the list of species here. Um, yeah, the female bettas, I agree with you guys talking in chat that the female bettas are uh, very graceful compared to the males, which sometimes can be a little bit like gung-ho, just slam into the party at full speed. Um, or just sit there sleeping and doing nothing sometimes. Whereas the females kind of just like flutter their fins and just kind of like hover around uh, the place, you know? Um, so what I want to, I want to show you guys the betta uh, balunga. And uh, this one was the next one discovered. So 1910 and then 1940 was the next discovery. Um, so let's go to that bed of longer. And images. A lot of times these images are wrong. Just a heads up. But again, probably not a beta that you're going to write home about. It, it almost reminds me of a giant sparkling gourami or something. But I, I see potential in it though. Like 
I see some purple and some green and some like peacock metallic lime green. Um, here is a pair. And uh, these are all in the Acarensis group still, the, the faster water bettas that live in a little bit cooler water um, and that do want a little more oxygen and they don't need the extreme acidity um, in general. But yeah, like here's here's a wild one uh, that a photo from 2004. Um, Zhao Hong is another very popular ichthyologist in the Southeast Asia. Um, but yeah, those tails are really nice. To me, I am more impressed by the wild tails, honestly, than by the um, than the other ones. Now, just because I happen to stumble by this one, but these are the uh, the Beta Ocelata uh, Malunao, Malunao, and uh, man, these are a sleek little betta with yellow spots on the tails and the the gunmetal gray or blue all down the side. Um, these are uh, definitely, um, uh, what is it, BW um, Blackwater Aquatics. They sell um, quite a few of these different bettas. But some of these wild bettas are just rad. Um, okay, so let's let's make our way. Another betta, Ocelata. Um, male here. Look at that bulldog face of it. It's, it's just wild. Um, yeah, they don't usually have teeth. Um, they they use suction and they. Um, okay, uh, Asia, can, can a pair live safely in a six gallon without a plan for separation? Um, you know, I just witnessed over 25 males and females mixed living together in a 20 gallon. They had some um, fish set up as dither fish. Uh, they had, what was it? Silver tip tetras in there uh, and some quarries. So it was a very full tank at aquarium co-op, but they seem to be doing just fine. Uh, that being said, I'm watching my beta rubras right now in the bag still. Cause I've been streaming this whole time. I haven't cut them loose yet. And they are definitely fighting in the bag. They're definitely tossling. So I think it depends on context. Um, I I would say you could definitely probably have the females together. The male and female, they're going to establish, in most of these species, they're going to establish a hierarchy or a dominance order. And so sometimes you have to let them kind of fight it out for a day. But if they're getting too violent and you see like scales floating in the water or actual ripped fins past just the nipping on the edge, um, if you see more than a posturing, um, if you see ramming into the gills really hard, that's another sign that things are getting out of hand. You should split them up. Uh, but to a certain degree, bettas do just kind of like pea puffers and other fish. They, they kind of need to have a pecking order and it's called a pecking order because they peck at each other. They, they don't, they aren't necessarily nice to each other. They, they, uh, but I think you'd be okay. Um, especially if you had a pair, um, I don't want to say that for sure. It's just my gut feeling. Uh, I'm going to put mine together. I'll say that. And, uh, so yeah, now this is beta. Um, Beta arugana, arugans, and again, not one that you definitely write home about, but it's got kind of the macrostoma body type, that bulldog look again, but it's got really soft and subtle um, colors for when it's in spawning mode. You can tell that a flash, this is a photo from a, a German uh, website on Reddit, but it's from another website. <laughs> And uh, you can see the other subtle colors in the in the fins. I mean, very nice, like pink and, and um, soft colors going on there, that lavender. And then you've got the kind of metallic alien beta scale stuff going on in the tail. Um, but again, these are the ones that are in faster water. Also, beta um, uh, smar smargadina, these guys, if I can find a good picture. These guys are um, 
also a pretty colorful natural beta. This Mark Dino ones. Uh, the really cool picture they got here is um, is hard to actually show anything. Uh, but, uh, oh, the other one I want to show that's not in this group, but while I, I mentioned it earlier, and I don't know, sorry to answer your question, uh, about the... Um, about the fact if they're mouth brooders or not, those ones we were looking at. Um, I just don't know. Uh, but these are, speaking of bettas I have, when I mentioned them earlier, I have these um, uh, mini opina, um, or mini opina, however you want to say it, uh, bettas, thanks again, um, to a viewer uh, who brought them to me. Uh, I don't want to like shout out the name uh, in, in case they don't want their name out there. But um, again, very kind. And I was very, very much appreciative. I, I'm trying to collect more bettas that can live in say like a two to five gallon tank. And I'd love to have just some pairs or even a few girls and a guy or whatnot. Um, I get them usually if I plant them enough, they're fine. Um, these these are one of the smaller, if not the smallest beta, the beta uh, mini opina, uh, and they mine are actually pretty different than these uh, color wise. Mine have bright blue fins that run a, a good length, and then uh, yeah, more like this one here bright blue fins but mine actually run a little bit longer and they have some dots in it and then they have that beautiful turquoise jewel of an eye yeah the hellboys are really cool um yeah thank you uh is it kalina is that how i say your name i just don't want to get it wrong uh fyi raffles bulletin of zoology in southeast asia journal uh in which mr tan has done some publishing uh yeah Okay, sweet, Kalina. Well, welcome, and I'm glad I got your name right. I like that name, by the way. I know I said that, but I, I do like it. So um, it's interesting here. I'm looking at they have uh, some of these other pictures that have hybrid bettas um, that are two species or more than one species. So, yeah, people, I guess, are constantly meddling with them. It seems like it's a bigger thing in Asia by far than – than in the U.S. and probably in Europe, honestly. Um, all right, let's let's go to the next the next one in this Ocarensis species grouping. <laughs> the Beta Belunga um, is that one's from Borneo. The Beta Orangus, Borneo. Borneo has so many. Um, this one's from Malaysia and Borneo, but the Beta uh, Chinai. Uh, which is named not after China, but after a ichthyologist by the last name Chin, who happened to be on the paper for publishing uh, Pandagaras, oddly enough. Um, but yeah, uh, these guys here, they definitely have a different face. They got a big eye. Um, and they're in that Ocarensis complex, again, the, the faster water ones. Um, not much to write home about, though. Um, maybe somebody else has had one that they feel like is different. Ooh, look at this little beta picta. These are the other really teeny beta species, or one of the other teeny species. I love these little guys. Where'd it go? I clicked on it, and it disappeared. Come on, Internet. Stop trying to ruin my stream, yo. Uh, what's interesting, too, is that Borneo has so many different fish for an island. Um, it, it evolved so many different varieties. It's a really unique place. I'd love to go there. The other thing is Papua New Guinea likely has just as many, if not more, species. But we just don't know. Uh, we just haven't been there. And, and and don't really know. Just like the live stream I did about Battis um, and the Battis that we don't know yet, uh, we just, yeah, we just don't know a lot about them. Um, uh, 
All right, so Beta Obscura. Let's take a look at that one, and then we'll look at Beta Pinguis, uh, and that will complete the Ocarensis Beta grouping. And then we'll just look at a couple other wild betas, unless we have any requests. Uh, but none of this info, other than like locations and just vague amounts of info, none of this is stuff that I know off the top of my head. Um, look at that. That's a pretty nice looking wild fish. That almost, that reminds me of an alien bed of the body. The head looks so different though. It almost looks like a friggin' pike cichlid or a trout or like a, a northern uh, pike minnow, like a interest, interesting. Um, um, Betas and Babis are not super far away um, from their uh, from being related, but they are. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, it's about about forty million years they split off from one another, and um, they both populated heavily. Uh, but the Babis are not. They're not labyrinth fish. They do not have that labyrinth organ, whereas the betas and uh, garamis and anabantoids, they all have that ability, and they evolve that later. Um, that's a newer feature, whereas the baddest has more primitive um, features still. Um, fish that reminds me of a betta is the pygmy sunfish. They are inquiring and hunting all the time. Yeah, definitely. Um, I agree. Uh, yeah, they they are. Yeah, bettas. That's a good point too, Patrick. Bettas are shallow water fish generally, and do better in shallow water. A lot of mine that I've spawned over the years. A lot of bettas that I've kept. Oh wow, look at this giant betta wild one some of them are crazy now here is quote unquote a wild bed of splendens um the wild ones look like this this metallic with the red and green um and people are like oh that was the easiest to to spawn you know that was the most colorful to work with like we see this color and easily we're like oh duh that's how we're gonna get to this, um, that's actually a better embolus. Uh, but you can kind of see where they came up with the alien bettas by mixing the embolus and the, uh, and the splendens. And then here's Machiansis betta. Uh, these guys are really pretty. Look at that. The red, blue, red, blue. So pretty. All right, good night, uh, Melissa. Have a good one. Uh, oh, ADHD, yeah, uh, shallow water. I would say that they live in water about an inch to six inches deep most of the time. Most of these bettas. Any of the slow water moving bettas. Um, and again, here's, uh, well, that's not going to help. That's in, La uh, not even in Latin. That is in either Portuguese or Italian. But talks about the labyrinth organ and something that I was mentioning the other night on a stream is that the labyrinth organ forms in, in fish. It, 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 it isn't there from the time they're in their egg state. It happens kind of as like a puberty thing. It grows with their body and they need to keep the water and air flowing through it to, for it to be effective and so they actually um, have about 75% um, humidity that is needed or they will um, not evolve it or develop it and, and they'll actually have a real hard time. Now, uh, the last of that uh, group of bettas is the, uh, is the pingus. And these are, uh, again, not the most, like, let's write home about them, but that looks to me like it's part um, Minop Minopa and part Pingus. That's just my opinion. Uh, 
But, oh, here's a great picture. That's the water that bettas live in very frequently right here. It is right at the shore of where a jungle has flooded. And oftentimes these, these re regions totally dry up and it's just night nighttime lights out for that betta. But um, other times it'll rain again or there's a creek attached and they can get back out. Uh, but a lot of bettas are able to go on land for a short, short distance and kind of like snakeheads and kind of, you know, crawl their way over to places. Um, Nathan Bennett, hello, how are you doing? Um, do you happen to know what species they cross to create the king bettas um, they have available at Petco? Uh, I don't. Let's take a look at that. Um, king bettas. Um, and I don't know what, is it just a giant? I mean, this is just a giant beta here, but um, Angelfish do like black water, uh, but not quite as extreme as gouramis and bettas. Gouramis and bettas take the cake when it comes to, they can live in literally almost Coca-Cola-like conditions. Um, but yeah, these are just giant. They're, they're half splendid, half, yeah, here we go. Here's Petco. They, yeah, so they are just giant bettas. They're giant betta, uh, mixed with the king betta is a betta splendens and uh, yeah and a and a giant betta uh which a giant betta itself is a species so hold on let me pull that up for you guys and we can take a look take a look um Do croaking gouramis make sound? Yes, they totally do. Tori E, uh, I do. I do live in Dr. Pepper-like conditions. That is true. I have a hard time uh, ex existing otherwise. Uh, so, beta anaboides, uh, or anabatoides. I always say anaboides. I don't know. Or anabatoides. Anabatoides. Dur -dur -dur -dur. Dur -dur -dur. Um, let's see here. Let me get this. Uh, and this one is just the giant betta was discovered in 1850. So we're talking early in betta taxonomy and history. And this was actually discovered by the guy that the starry night cichlid was, um, discovered by, um, boy, those are beautiful. That is color enhanced. Never mind. I can tell by years of fooling people myself. Um, but yeah, like here's a big old, a big old one. Uh, there are so many bettas, but croaking gouramis, actually I should make a video on fish that talk. I've done quite a bit of research about it and it's, it's very interesting how they move their, um, they either use their air bladder or they use their, um, their gill flap operculum and their uh, their ventral fin, uh, like the the longest uh, stave on it, and they'll squeak that together to make noises. Um, so yeah, you want a purple betta so bad, near impossible. Yeah, a lot of times uh, I have purple bettas right now in my fish room. Well, they're more like this color. I mean, I don't know if you call that purple, but it's pretty purple. It's bluish purple, but it's real hard to get the light lavender bettas. Um, they just tend to change color as they get older. That's the problem is all my betta that I've ever spawned that are, that I'm like, Oh, I love this. Uh, about 30 to 40% just go haywire at about a year old and don't look anything like that anymore. And that, by that time I've already rebred them frequently. Um, one time your Pictus cat spoke to you, it's, uh, on your channel. Oh, cool. It's a vibrating sound. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they can, 
they're one I think that brings its air into its uh they can do so just like I can do this uh you can they can pull air past their um esophagus and basically cause that little diaphragm to vibrate but they can also do that with their air bladder and then they can do it with um there's a few other ones they can use um <laughs> including farting which i think is funny um there are a few catfish that can fart and that's how they make noises uh hey eduardo um well let's see here what other bettas do we want to look at? Looky, looky, loo. Betta, betta, boo. Uh -huh. Man, I want to, I should, I'd like to do a map of all, where all the bettas are. Oh, yeah, you know, I like the pick the bettas. Uh, a lot of times what happens is a betta complex, the fish can interbreed within a complex. And, that like um the biggest complex is um uh uh pugnax and that's got your opalon your uh brevobesis uh ferox um fuchsia your lehigh uh prima beta your pugnax beta your poultra beta not poultra your beta raja and your stigmosa all are in that group. Um, but let's take a look at this betty. Beta folks. These are a very uh, wildy beta that has been popular in the hobby off and on. Um, licorice garamis are also another type of garami that have been popular that really like those uh intensely acidic waters i'm talking like 3.0 uh ph insane stuff this one was uh officially named in 98 but it's been around probably since the 80s in the hobby uh the falks the beta falks and some of them people have been actually trying to um cross like this is a, a mixed one unimaculata sangata that's a pretty pretty one i'd love to we should try to get a better breeder from southeast asia on the show um to let us know licorice garamis eat vinegar eels with no rinse yeah that is actually true i don't worry about it whatsoever Oh, here's a bed of fox doing its mating thing. All angered and aggro. Another one. Rawr! I feel like these bettas should should make noises and talk. Um, well, guys, I could go on and on and on, but we can do what what we're gonna do. I decided because we're an hour and a half into this stream, is we are going to. Uh, save the two uh, complexes, the uh, Pugnax and the Splendens and uh, Unimaculata and the Wasserai. Actually, we'll do all four of those uh, another day. Um, those are groups that hold the other half of the bettas that we didn't look through tonight. Uh, so, yeah. Um, does anybody have any last-minute thoughts? Oh, I'm just gonna stretch. If you see this shirt, and you have any inclinations? Uh, then yeah. Um, <laughs> John Monroe, Monroe, how's it going, buddy? Uh, do 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 do. Uh, average keep. Uh, oh, okay. So, apocalyptic Adam, uh, you keep pygmies in a forty. I can only see four at once, but there must be 50 in there. Yeah, that's so true with so many fish. Uh, Lonnie, Looney Tunes, good to see you. And uh, 
Yeah, no problem. I'm glad you enjoyed the stream. Uh, we will have a good weekend, Laura and I. Supreme Leader Army, what's going up? Seven Mile, what's up? Um, yeah, we'll do more about a review in the future. By the way, the raffles bulletin uh, of zoology that you mentioned, uh, some serious rabbit holes to go down. Yeah, no, I know. I I get that, you know, this channel, I'll, I've been ready information-wise to make a half-hour or hour-long video on the history of bettas and humans and, and domestication and what we know science-wise for like two months, three months now. And I was going to have a friend film it and do like a really nice cinematography job. But, I mean, he's he's been doing his thing. Um and hasn't had time to do it. He's been doing professional video editing stuff. So I might just have to make the video myself, but it's just kind of interesting in my mind, um, the history of humans interacting with them. That and half beaks too. I mean, crazy. But we have a lot more to cover and we'll we'll come back. We'll we'll touch on this all again. And uh everybody says it was good to see you on the stream, honey. Do you want to come say goodbye? Bye. Honey. Hello, fish dreams. Um, what kind of short fin betta would work with a school of cardinal tetras? Um, you can put most bettas with tetras, fine. Um, they're, tetras are quick. A lot of bettas aren't that fast. Some are quick. Uh, the macrostomas are, are very fast betta. But uh, most of the wild bettas are kind of a slow metabolism, just chill and ambush kind of fish. Kind of take their time and search through the substrate or the floating debris, and they eat little insects and things like that. Um, and so I would say that you could give it a go with pretty much any of them. Uh, but look into the mouth size because bettas in general, well, fish in general, however big their mouth is, that's what they'll attempt to eat. And bettas sometimes they'll attempt to eat stuff even bigger than what fits in their mouth. Uh, but for the most part, yeah. Um, will the tetras fin nip? Um, they won't usually in my experience. I mean, I put lots of bettas uh, like placot bettas or, or betta splendens uh that don't have crazy long fins i've had like up to a dozen adults males and females mix in an aquarium and as long as you can break up that line of sight with like a water hyacinth or floating um uh water lettuce or lily pads or even just sticks and rocks coming up to the surface they usually do just fine um especially when they have little places to hide when they have little cubbies and little like little um sections of plants to go chill under or leaf litter um a lot of these uh wild bettas want leaf litter like you just get a leaf that's dried in kind of a taco shape and they'll be under there most of the time honestly um so yeah um drench thank you i appreciate it good to see you um <laughs> adam says uh, I, I kept a female betta in a community tank with, with skirt stretches and commanded the respect of every single fish in there. Yeah, I bet that happened. Um, any of the long, yeah, skirt tetras or the long, thin, like fancy versions of tetras too, um, are a little more dangerous. And yeah, like John said, barbs way nippy, but barbs are nippy anyways. Um, now, you keep barbs with other barbs, and you can keep them in check, or with big danios. But, I mean, big danios, big barbs, uh, or not big barbs, but any barbs, and, and larger danios, even like zebra danios and, and kythit danios, they get really, really nippy. Um, fire danios, they get really nippy, and just, they have a lot of energy. They need a lot of room to swim, and if they don't, they just start, like, being the, like, kid in a road trip car that like won't stay on his side of the seat from his sister or whatever, you know, like mom, he's bugging me, that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, Lara, please come back. 
Oh, she says she's in her pajamas, so she's too good for you guys. Well, guess what? I'm in my pajamas, too, and I came to work. You're really not going to say goodbye? I did say goodbye. Bye. Just your face. All right, we're not getting a goodbye from my wife. I guess, I mean, I guess you guys are going to have to do a like spike or, or something. I mean, uh, I don't know. But... We'll get her back on here sometime. We have more trivia we'll do. And uh, leave a comment uh, so I can show her, look, people want you on the show if, if you guys do. If you don't, you can leave that comment too. Uh, and, and then I won't show her. But I'm sure she'll look anyways. All right, guys. Have a great night. Um, I just wanted to kind of go and do this. I uh, didn't have to do any research on this stream. Just was looking through species, and it's kind of fun for me because this is how I start my research a lot of times. You know, I'll just start a night like this, and then I'll go down a rabbit hole, start looking at academic articles and being like, what is that? Where did that come from? What else lives in that river? And uh, so I just like doing that with you guys and seeing what else pops into your heads, too. So, uh, yeah. All right, you guys. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so much, mods, super chatters, regular chatters, lurkers, watchers. Rewatchers, uh, the replay crew, uh, we really appreciate all of you. The community as a whole, I appreciate all of you. So take care of your critters, take care of your plants, and hopefully, most likely, uh, they'll take care of you back many fold emotionally and just giving you something to do, giving you a fulfilling life. So uh, take care of yourself so you can do that and take care of those around you. Uh, it's a big old circle of taking care and giving care. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later and uh, have a wonderful night. Bye, guys.